Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Third time is the charm. <laughs> we are back for a new edition of uh, Grondwerk after some technical dif difficulties. What else? Um, yeah, we are going to talk today about uh, the Lugubrum pre orders coming out today. Um, since the soft Wotter has been reissued on um, the Devil's Elixir, we're going to talk about that. Old Jarn. And we're going to do a uh, top five mid 2021. So that's what we're planning to do today. Let's see where we get. Um, yeah, I just asked how you were. <laughs> You're good, so easy going. A lot of Alcadale stuff. Um, yeah, that's yep. what we were talking about. Um, the last question, or the first question I was going to ask, you didn't play that many shows before, Slong. Is there a change in mind or a change in? Just what came in, we, we have been due to, due to the pandemic, been silent for two years, I think, only played a couple of shows. And I think we were just full of energy to play and the offers were interesting. So we I, I said that you kept it. Uh, you kept the live shows low on purpose. Is that mm -hmm. like, oh no, it's true? Yeah. Yeah. Also, because there are many reasons why why we don't play a lot. It's just it's a small con country, and I think it's more interesting if you play less. Um, but now the the it are mostly festivals, so there are other interesting bands. And also because the the, the vinyl is out and there's a, a good interest in it. And I think we can reach, it's a bit opportunistic, of course, but reach more people. Uh, but I think this will be the limit uh, regarding gigs half, per half a year, I think. Um, oh. So it's still only, I think, six in six months. So it's not that active, but it's active for us. Yeah. So I saw some images from the um, Alcatraz show. <laughs> <laughs> that looked good. <laughs> that looked like a lot of fun and a lot of response from the audience. Yeah, it, I think it was for a large gig because it was large. I don't know how many people, but I think maybe thousand and a half, two thousand. I don't know. Um, it was the best ever, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, of course, the smaller ones like at Hansa Feasten and Kinky Star or, or, or I don't know, were also very uh, intense and amazing. But, but for such uh, like a mainstream festival and then such feedback. Also, it was the first since two years. And yeah. I think the first festival in Belgium or one of the first that were allowed to proceed or, 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 or to happen. Um, you could notice in the people that there was a lot of uh, energy yeah. uh, and that combination worked very well. Uh, also, maybe a little bit too much of alcohol that they make very good. <laughs> Get her blood. Yeah. It, it surprised me how, because I never been to Alcatraz and I since you were playing, I looked up some videos and stuff. Like that. It surprised me how big it was. It's like a smaller version of Just Pop. And I thought I always thought it was like an intimate festival, but it's actually quite big for. Yeah, it, 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 I haven't been to Just Pop in okay. 15 years or, or something. I, I was there only in the beginning, like in, mm -hmm. nine, in the 90s. And oh, okay. I recall, recall uh, right. It was 15,000 people then, and it reminds me to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think, but it's more spread because in, back in the day, uh, Raspop was just a field and a stage and then a small yeah. tent, maybe the second or also the first edition. But uh, Alcatraz is more spread. And, okay. and the nice thing is also you meet a lot of people. Um, you know, you haven't seen in, in a long time. So that's very nice. I didn't re I want to 
don't really want to be negative about it, but I didn't really like the lineup because it's more mainstream and but whatever. I ha we had we all had a very nice time. So yeah. I cool. think I think for for a lot of those types of festivals, um, I think the lineup is always let's not be negative, but like you said, it's kind of yeah. you, you pick cherries and you're there for the. Yeah. the they do have some rarities that Raspop never did until a couple of years ago. Um, like Cyclone was playing, which was yeah. awesome. Um, another old band, Killer, was also very fun to see. Um, yeah, so that's something that um, Alcatraz always have been doing, is not only focus on the mainstream, but give other bands, actually like us, a mm -hmm. And I, that's something that you can really appreciate. And Raspop never really, a few excep exceptions aside, uh, never really did that. Yeah, I think the juggernaut that that thing has become, I'm not sure if, if they have scope on those kind of no. I don't, the, know, yeah, I don't know how they work or, or what the ambition is, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a clear channel event, probably, I guess. Raspo? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's I, under the same. Uh, I think the guy, the guy from Werchter also has Raspo, no? Uh, from what I know is that the guy from Bebop, the mm -hmm. famous uh, metal club in eastern Belgium, in, uh, in Vosselaar, is, is mm -hmm. in charge of the programmation and was one of the founders. Yeah. I don't know in how far Clear Channel has or, or Live Nation has Nation, to yeah. cover the, the, side, the business side. I, don't, I really don't know. No, I, I think I heard, a, not even a rumor, but I think I heard that one, that one of the two big ones, Live Nation or Clear Channel, I'm not sure. Maybe Live Nation. They are the same as far as I, as far as I know. Oh, okay. Live Nation is like the new name of Clear Channel. Let's stick to the underground because we clearly don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as uh, the Hubung go, there is not much to talk about uh, in, in the sense of uh, new things for the band or with the band. Uh, we talked extensively in, in numerous uh, episodes, but. Um, they have launched the pre-orders for Brune Kolm and Brune Tron, which is the first time I think it's on vinyl. Yeah. 100% sure, but I think yeah. so. They, they had a slew of releases just released on TV. I think most of their stuff. Uh, can, can you repeat? I didn't uh, understand. Most of their stuff originally just came out on TV. Not on yeah, TV. that's right. I think from not the totem, but Alchemist, I think, mm -hmm. were the first releases on vinyl, if I'm yeah. right. Something around there, I think. Yeah. yeah. The and totem, I have... maybe also, um, but like the, the early releases, Winterstones, Gedachte en Geheugen, De Zuivering, all these records have, ne and then Bruyne Troon, have never been on vinyl before. So, I uh, think we tape here and there. Yeah, they did some tapes. That, that that's yeah. right. But right. Uh, so, it's really yeah. nice. I, I'm really looking forward. It's very, uh, yeah. uh, very exciting to 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 see that album on 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 vinyl. It's uh, yeah. it's I a listen, classic. Yeah, I listened to both again today, and um, they are brother brother sister records in a way because yeah. of all the the fart noises and the. Uh, <laughs> they're going to the toilet noises and whatever but yeah they even have um tracks that link up to each other like um the first one on the on the new record and the first yeah. one on the old record are you know brother and sister tracks or however you want to call it so mm -hmm. cool to see i listened to them both again today and yeah one is a classic and the other one is kind of the amalgamation or everything they ever did i think yeah. that's put, true put out to one record I think it's also the first with a rather professional sound. Although they have been 
recording professionally before, but yeah. like not a professional sound, but like maybe a modern sound. Modern sound. I Without think... being, yeah. it's still raw, but they, they have been doing tricks that I, or sound tricks that I never expected them to do. And it's just uh, something I noticed, so it's not a judgment, but like, yeah. It's like a bit more, you know, compressed uh, uh, and stuff. And um, you, uh, it's mostly noticeable in the trash riffs because they still play old trash metal uh, uh, riffs. Yeah, and they stick out. The, the, in, in their way. And sometimes it just sound, sounds like eclectic riffs, but it are trash metal riffs. And with the new sound, it's it's a bit weird to hear, but I really enjoy it. It's a very nice album. It's weird to hear, but they work in the in the bigger picture of the album. Exactly. They they took the sound they have on the Plus Chomage and the other previous yeah. records that weren't black metal, but where they experimented with the more modern production, like you say. But yeah. now they have the fact that the metal is coming back into the fold. Yeah. So I think. I listened to the uh, Brune Cohn first and then back to Brune at home and the, the difference is day and night. Uh, in production, I mean, not necessarily the way they play. I still um, remember being in a, in a small underground venue in Ghent, uh, which is called Sunbaked Snow Cave. It's like also a place where there are uh, rehearsals, sp- yeah. uh, rooms and stuff. And I don't know if it was their gig or if they were all present on the gig the guys from Luhibrum but they mentioned then uh, in a way like we we are again making a metal album Uh, uh, hmm? the thing you're talking about is not that long ago I don't know how long it is actually it must have been before the pandemic so more than a year so now it's there the album and I still remember like um wondering how will it be uh, and and then and the, the other fun thing was that uh, Bartitus the 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 ex singer who was also there then showed all spots in the area where Luhubrum has done stuff like and I wasn't aware at all that that area because it's an old uh, how do you call it not a factory area but like this you know they're all kind of places um and that they recorded there but they also rehearsed there and i didn't really know so it was really fun that he was showing like oh we did this here and that and that there and uh yeah it was nice so it's a, 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 an area with history <laughs> is it in the center of ghent no it's the outside it's um in the north of ghent uh between just the border of the city and the first suburb called Wondelham. It's next to, it's not a canal, but uh, some kind of water that connects two canals and was some kind of um, production zone in the 19th century. And that's why all these uh, old buildings are now used for artists or, or uh, you know, startups, whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's not crackpunt. It's no. Maybe that it started out as a crackpunt, uh, as a, as a as a um, how you call it in English, crackpunt, a squat. Oh. <laughs> uh, but it's all you know um, within the law. <laughs> they have power, electricity. Right. Yeah, and there's a toilet. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, where else would, where it's else not else squad. <laughs> yeah, where else? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, they're both out on Aphelion Productions, uh, which yeah. is in the UK, sadly. <laughs> yep. Um, that's that, sad, sad, sad world. <laughs> uh, there are a few editions, so if you're into that, look it up. There, um, it, there are no pictures on the entire site. Um, so it's only a guess as to what it uh, it will look yeah. like. Today um, they revealed the shirt, which looks really nice. Yeah. 
Uh, so I don't know how far the, 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 the artwork will be similar. I'm not sure. I think the we've seen the artwork on the uh, on the digital format and the CD format. You know, the, ah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. The circle of carrots. Mm -hmm. I hope for uh, the throne they use, you know, the CD artwork maybe or I'm not sure. Right. But yeah, there are some bundles you can pick up. I just um, I don't think I'm going to grab them, grab them from the UK because with uh, the Fed taxes and stuff like that, it's it's basically insane to buy records there right now. Yeah. Everything gets taxed. Um, but yeah. Yeah, great record. I uh, can't wait to spin it and to finally hold it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, another one that was quite impossible to hold and to spin is the uh, the folkloric necro metal. There you go. Uh, this, like I said, was uh, re released. Can you show it again? The bottom, the font, a bit closer. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> ugly. It's a um, it's a not common font, I would say. No, I haven't seen it used uh, too much, especially the T and the L. That bottom out is basically the same letter. Ah, oh, yeah. kind of like it too. That's I, I think I said, uh, that I like this cover mainly has to do with how they bundled it together with the um, the text and stuff like that. Yeah. Not that the original has such a good font, but this reminds me to like some Meshuga kind of band that plays, you know, King Diamond songs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gent King Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is it without the plastic on it. it uh, it's quite different from the original artwork, yeah. but the original artwork also differs, differs on CD and vinyl, so there is no real. Um, yeah. There is no. Real, I think this one leans in closer to the CD version. I will show it. Yeah, there it is. Can you I see think, it clearly? Yeah, it has some glare, but we can see it. It is basically yeah. kind of looks the same. Yours is more canyon looking. This is more a dense forest, but um, yeah. Mine is more, I think, purple blue, and. Um, they did some effects ba back then on the band name and the uh, uh, album title, but clearly done in an old version of Photoshop. And what effect? Like just how it looks, or I think they put a blur on it and then changed the color and then did the glue around and then. Okay. The PC ran out of memory and then they just saved something that looked okay. <laughs> the good enough version. But I, I really like it. Especially the insides with the head. Oh, with it's, the head. A, it's a bit uh, no, nostalgic. But I remember when I uh, bought it that it perf perfectly, you know, captures the atmosphere of the music. Yeah, I. That's the only thing I uh, wish they had included with um, with the reissue is the uh, the lineup or the the you know the the face pictures. Yeah. But in here. It's only recently that you know or that they revealed who who these guys were, and the way yeah. that the the names are present on Metal Archive, but it was long, long, long a uh, mystery who they were, although that. Ildjarn was involved, was yeah. commonly known, but the others were always, um, to me at least, a mystery. Not on the CD? Hmm? The, the names are not on the CD version. No, there's almost nothing on the CD. Like the, the booklet is only pictures, and at the back sides of the, the tray, yeah. there is all the information with the most fun thing. Uh, that the whole album was uh, recorded under influence of uh, THC. And especially, but it's a bit uh, dark, um, with no care for technical details. They included that on the on the reissue. So. <laughs> ah, okay, aiming to that. And it was a Napalm Records, and 
when they were still releasing good music, Napalm. Mm -hmm. Napalm. Yeah, I was looking at it. Um, Actually, Norse League, but distributed by Napalm Records. From uh, it is from '96 already. That's yeah. Well, not surprised, but I I remember when buying it. I was uh, in a CD store in Ghent called Billboard, and it was the time you could listen to the CDs at the desk. So I always had this big pile of CDs. And I, if I remember right, it was Pentecost 3 from Anathema that I wanted to hear because it was in the pile and they put this on. Okay. So I was with the Anathema CD waiting. And of course it starts with this ambient stuff, yeah. which makes sense mm -hmm. with Anathema. <laughs> that it started and it was a bit uh, confusing, but I did like it, but I still didn't know what it was because it was big pile and then it, it was this and I bought it and yeah, really nice. They had it in this, you know, regular store. Yeah, nice coincidence. Yeah. Otherwise, maybe you wouldn't found it. No, uh, it wasn't a pile. I would have listened to it, but. Yeah, okay. Let's blast through the artwork a bit. Um, so mm -hmm. there's just a track list on the back. It is limited, it seems, to 500. Uh, I think 100 on black, and then the rest is blue, kind of matching the, uh, the artwork. There is the insert, which is just more trees, and then the DHC reference we talked about. Design. Which was There's Sorry? something more lacking. I, on the CD on top is also sort factor represent no political or ideological view. That's not on the on the reissue. No? Maybe because they're all bald, that they were afraid to be called skinheads or something. Yeah, I'm not sure if that if that uh, was a concern by them because I read the uh, Iljarn manifest or part of the Iljarn manifest today and. He yeah. basically says <laughs> he doesn't give a shit what you think of him and how ah, you okay. as his policy. Yeah, that manifest is in the Ildjarn is Dead EP. Yeah. And I, I, I read it, but I, I have never read it. So is it long? It is extremely long, but I've read it on in, it's on the on the internet. Okay. But it, if you just uh, type an Iljarn manifest, it comes up. But I was reading it on my phone, and it's in such a small letter type that it's kind of hard to read. But I, I managed because it was during lunch break. I managed to get the first six pages, and it's still introduction, so it's quite long. Oh, okay, that's nice. And quite hateful. So, um, yeah, it's basically him saying goodbye, and it's he leaves it up to you to um, interpret if that's goodbye to music and you know the world in general or goodbye to life. But uh, how old is the manifest? I can't say, but it's on Il Jarn is Dead and Il Jarn is Dead is around this time, I think 96, 97 maybe. Oh. It is Because I, this is the the insert that's, whoa, in this, but it's that's even cool. smaller than on the internet, and I'm pretty sure it's not. So awesome. it's still still in the '90s that he wrote it. Yeah, it is kind of hard to see, but okay. But then at least he was still alive in the early 2000s because I mailed him back then. Oh yeah. Yeah, I want to do an interview. Uh, when we still had the magazine, his answer was, I don't have the energy. <laughs> yeah. You should read the manifest and then <laughs> and see where you went wrong, I guess. OK. <laughs> uh, but he, I, I can't say 100% that I'm sure, because um, I'm not sure if Phil Jarn's dead came out in the period that he was recording or his recording period or after. I can look it up, but yeah. Uh, it yeah, I think it was released later. Yeah, probably. It, yeah. See, it should be later, but uh, let's see. Um, um, still, Jarn is dead 2005, so yeah. Yeah. 
I can't say for sure when that manifest was written. Um, and I don't think there's a date on the internet uh, version of that one. So maybe someone will drop it in the comments. Um, sound wise, it is. Um, I wouldn't say it's all over the place, but it's something very different from Iljarn. Um, they are. There's a they are a three or a four piece in um, in this configuration. It's Iljarn, Nithoch, and then here we go. Tvigir, I think Tvigir, something like that, and Hain Hund. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's a bit Norse. So yeah, I guess something like that. Um, it is described on multiple platforms as minimalist, atmospheric, ritualistic metal. Mm -hmm. I think they're the title of the record: folkloric necro metal. Kind of, if you combine those two, it kind of covers the loads of, of what it sounds like. Yeah, we have to make the distinction distinction between between folkloric and folk necro metal um, because there's nothing folk on this record. No. Um, yeah. How did you when you when you were listening to the stack of CDs? How did it come in? Because you were expecting Anathema, but it had to it had to leave a mark, I guess. Yeah, because. It's long ago, but I um, there's a song that has this huge squeal, and in my memory, it's like that was the first song I heard. But yeah. I can be wrong, but because it's not the first song, but I was very impressed because of the atmosphere of the ambient atmosphere of the album. Um, and I was already sucked into it. I was listening on 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 on, on headphones, expecting anatoma. Uh, but the ambient could have come from anatoma itself because if you listen, for example, to Pentecost Three, there's this long ambient middle piece. Also, my dying bride had been doing that. The the uh, Le Ser Malade on um, one of the EPs. So it was not that unusual to to have this, but of course the 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 abrupt um, outburst of, of noise black metal, and I was from of course familiar with black metal, um, was not like a shock. What is this? But of course it was a shock <laughs> not to have anatoma. Um, but it was, I think the word uh, captivating or interesting. I don't know another word. It, it took my attention or, or also emotionally like, like whoa this is really great because it was not only noise and that's uh, when you're referring to folkloric it's not the same as um, folk or something like the whole atmosphere of I think the the booklet really shows the atmosphere of the music like the the, the, the darkness of a forest but in a psychedelic way because yep. it's really, it's not like it, it, it. It's like a trip, I think. Um, and I'm not saying this because they are referring to THC. That's too a easy, uh, and it it doesn't do the music justice if you only are uh, influenced by the, the this liner note. But that was my impression, like um, something. Yeah, it's, um, psychedelic is not a good word, but um, um, just trance-like. Yeah, trance-like. Not you by making the cover blue, in essential, or, or making everything blue. It kind of has this different, um, like it's not reality, but it's just beside reality. Like it's a glitch, and it lives in that, in that glitch, maybe the music. Because it's, of course, it is ambient, it has black metal, but it is black metal in such a way that it, it doesn't feel industrial. That's not the word I'm looking for, but it feels yep. very technical. Um, the, yeah, the guitar just sounds like a distorted mechanical layer mm -hmm. more than, than just guitar playing. And Iljarn has that too, but more in a jangly punk way. And this yeah. is, yeah, it's almost like it's played by machines. I know yeah. the drum is, uh, is programmed. Yeah, but at the same time, it's still the the something natural is still present, and that makes it really good. I think it's not like Mysticum, which is distant and cold, industrial black metal. There's still 
like a link or a touch with the earth or nature mm -hmm. and uh, yeah that's what i like from it like there's still some something organic in it although like you say it's mechanical and i don't know if if that was their aim but, but if it was it, it's not easy to obtain such something because it's yeah. it's at at the, the 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 you know the opposite sides and yeah yeah that's why i would, would stay away from the industrial like you say mysticum has yeah. that depth that you know almost machinery like stamping yeah. i would say this is more like the iljarn is a funk stone but it has that that it just blasts on and on and on and on and that this mm -hmm. has two what this has more is that it has instrumentation that Iljarn would never have. Like mm -hmm. um, if you hear the bass sounds, I, I've written it down as um, a weird muddy bass. But if you if you I have looked at a few reviews of the um, thing, and uh, he used the word rubbery for the bass, which I which I kind of like. Uh, yeah. you know it all it almost has a rubber kind of feel. Um, but yeah, it has synth work that comes through, like in the track. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Grau, oh, I think. Um, mm -hmm. or maybe when that synth comes in, it just completely transforms that song and it goes from that mechanical black metal into, yeah, it takes the forefront and then it shape shifts, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's quite a weird record. Also, the absurd stops um, that they just, you know, they they start playing. They they build this energy, and then they just, you know, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, other other songs just fade out. It's yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it kind of takes you out in some parts, but it it has this weird um, build up. Like you have three tracks, then you have the sin track, and then. Um, the song Fra Kilden Kill Chernet, I think. That's the fourth something that breaks the record open. That's mm -hmm. the first track that really grabbed me, I would say. Uh, then you have this big synth organ piece in the middle, and then yep. the track uh Hitful of Tankig, which is in my opinion the best track of that of that entire record, which is the most hate inspired um yeah, the most hateful track I would say, or the most Hard track on the record. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's classic, I think. It wasn't that known back in the day. It seems more, more and more people. Um, it it came to the attention of more people nowadays, which is logical. Yeah. Uh, um, but for me, it's uh, it's very essential to have. It is. Uh, it's a bit. Yeah. It's. I, I can again say it's a weird record, but it's a weird record. It, in some cases, it kind of reminds me of, um, and especially the track, which is the one. Um, yeah. Back to Lisena Oi or something like that. It almost has, it has this polka as beat, which almost makes it like a dance track. And if you, if you see their uh, their heads in the pictures, like you said, like you, uh, said mm -hmm. The colors it kind of reminds me of, of Gabber of some yeah, of the some rain <laughs> with a mechanical sounds uh, on the feet. Now they will probably kill me for saying something like that, but I'm not sure. You never know with Norwegians, they do yeah. like techno. <laughs> yeah, I looked it up, and the first Thunderdome, the the one with the the Doberman on the cover was from 93, so it is possible that they they were inspired. <laughs> you make the checklist, you know, like mechanical, uh, hateful, driven. <laughs> I'm not saying that's what fuck this uh, Thunderdome, but you know, it kind of reminded me of it. Um, was there something else I had written down? Um, no, not really. And it means Black Guardian. That's the, the last thing I can remember. What? Black Guardian. Sort Fokter is Black Guardian. That's what I could make up. Hmm. I could not I could not find find what Iljarn means, but maybe it's just his name. 
Yeah, probably. Or, or, or yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the old yarn. Um, it seems the scope is um, is big on uh, on him and everything he does right now, especially since um, I know Seasons of Mist did a bunch of reissues, mm -hmm. especially the three big records from him. Uh, they reissued the reissue now, so it's um, yeah, it's definitely out there. I know for a fact that uh, the Devil's Elixir is also reissuing those again, but then with the original covers, I think mm -hmm. next year. So it's kind of flooding the market right now, and it's, I think, in my opinion, it's kind of weird that he gets so much attention because I'm not saying it's not good by any stretch of the imagination, but it is like we said in a previous uh, podcast or previous concert, it is quite anti-music if you want or very minimalistic or very yeah it all kind of blends into each other if you listen you know if you just listen on the on the surface but it's when you start listening mm -hmm. deeper that you you hear guitar lines here and there that, that pop out or something like that but I, th I still think it's kind of weird that he gets this much of attention right now i'm not sure where it all comes from but if you Keep pulling the lines, and you go to uh, stuff like uh, Bono and stuff like uh, the Hutchinson, mm -hmm. what they are doing. And yeah, I think the the newer kids that are playing this kind of metal, the, the more punk stomp metal, um, are kind of giving it a revival in some kind of. Yeah, but it's a, it's a general general you know movement or or, or trend. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you can relate it to the, the the recent interest in the Black Legions from France. There's mm -hmm. so many bands who took take inspiration from um, that style or that movement. And if you 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 would have said that you know 20 years ago, uh, nobody nobody liked bands like Balcatra or Vla, Vlad Tepes. It mm -hmm. was marginal amount of people who enjoyed it. Um, and now it's like the most, you know, the the the, the thing that's in the spotlight. Um, I think it's you know a side effect from it. Um, is that isn't that true for the entire genre of black metal? I think it was. It's, if you if you see it in, in context to now, I think the. The scope was way smaller back then because there weren't a lot of people interested. In yeah, and then especially something like Legion Noir, mm -hmm. such a niche within a niche that yeah, it is it is weird that it just. But yeah. th uh, there are many, uh, you know, uh, black metal made such a evolution, and many of the old bands or styles that were forgotten. Um, seem to come back yeah. like a band like limbonic art or that very melodic uh black metal that i thought that was totally over except from the dimi borgers got a complete revival from finland for example with bands like forced impact or or, or, or um what is it called vargraf uh, yeah. or is it Var not Var vargraf i think um, so that's also something that was, you know, I thought to be a close period. But I think that it, with Iljarn is different because, he, like you mentioned, Bone Owl, um, that's already from, you know, uh, 2008 or 9. Yeah, yeah. That there were, and there were more bands like this. Um, also uh, in the UK, like um, Sump. Or yeah. uh, Lindo Moss um, are active way longer than you know all these bands that are now jumping on 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 Iljar. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's not something new. The, the no. interest on on Iljar, I think he always got respect because he, I think he only wrote music in the nineties. But during the time, there have been releases, you know, every two years, 
compilations or or or, 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 or you know um so 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 some unreleased material on cd um so he has he has always been a little bit he has never been forgotten yeah that's true it's like maybe it's a revival or of a revival <laughs> yeah <laughs> stuff like legion blood down and stuff. yeah they have been playing the flag of uh, of that kind of music forever mm -hmm. right yeah i um i kind of noticed from the manifest also you have to read between the lines sometimes here and there but it's i always found it as because he played in thou shall suffer and yep. emperor stuff like that and i think and that's why i think the uh soft pop is so weird if you read between the lines in the manifest it kind of seems that contra movement to the old guys in black metal and i'm, I'm assuming he means like stuff like mayhem or I don't know who he means because he is not naming names, but I always felt like I don't maybe not Mayhem because Mayhem is still punk related, if you will. It's more the harsh, but um, stuff like Demo Bogie, for example, you know, or this, Emperor, or Emperor, where they went. Uh, but then to to in in '96 go for soft pop and, and put sins on it. It's not it's definitely not Demo Bogie, but you know to to bring sins back and to yeah, maybe do it in a in a different way, but to, I don't know, kind of a weird pullback to to the sound that he is kind of pushing away from. I guess that's what yeah. I'm saying. Um, it wasn't back then not that unusual to to act because of course there were many send bands, but he does uh, something totally different with it. But if uh, there were bands like uh, I don't know how to pronounce. Um, MZ412, mm -hmm. it was half uh, hard noise, half black metal already then. It was on bright, uh, it was on um, called Meat Industry. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying Sort Foctor is similar, but they also did things that, that, that were not the uh, melodic or the keyboard black metal, but uh, keeping the spirit of old primitive black metal and still uh, or, or, or using electronics, and still not in the way M Mysticum did, because that's something something totally different. There was also, I think, but maybe I'm a bit wrong there, but in some way there was, for, for example, also Parnassus from the guy from um, Puissance. Puissance was also this um, very negative, you know, industrial black noise thing and he had i think two black metal side projects he was from sweden and of course it doesn't sound like sort of factor, but the way he he the, the 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 black metal sounded and then the use of his keyboards are more to sort of factor or in that way than right. than the melodic black metal bands uh, and I won't say he he, he was aware or sort sort factor or the the other way. I don't know, but there were people, you know, trying these things. Mm -hmm. um, I think his other band from the from um, the guy from Parnassus was called Octinomos or something, and that was all this very cold um, black metal with this eerie keys and stuff. And also not like the way Manas did, because that was also something different. Yeah. And but in some way, yeah. Uh, but you're right; it was quite unusual. Mm -hmm. mm. I think the, the cold meat industries is something I uh, I'm going to look into next because I I skimmed the top a bit. I know that Iron Bonap had this yeah mission they did maybe five six years ago that got my attention, but. Uh, I know Demsovol, for example, is really into into that team, the, the guys from Skigerai. Yeah. So there's a lot to discover there too. Yeah, called meat industry was, you know, the uh, metal fans or black metal fans mostly were ha had these, you know, were short sighted or or, or or their view wasn't that wide musically, but within black metal, many many there was more possible and there has uh, back then um meat industry was very 
you know, respected. And it wasn't unusual at all as a black metal fan or extreme metal fan to be into um, cold meat. Actually, it was like not a must, but it was very logic. And you can also see it in the releases. Mortis was signed to 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 um, cold meat. Also, this project Iltfrost uh, yeah. um, that had members from Quest, for example. So it was this logical, you know, uh, connection. Mm-hmm. Although the guy. And the guy, uh, what's his name? Roger Karmanik, which is the, the, the guy from Brighter That Now, came from a totally other background than most of the black metal dudes. But I think it was because of the, you know, the, the, the very um, uh, misanthropic nature of most of the releases and the interest. There was also this neo folk uh, like um, Moon Lay Hidden Beneath the Cloud on it. And it's also not that weird that black metal people are, are, were interested in. So it's a bit of a side jump, but because we're uh, mentioning brighter that now, it's really inter- interesting to delve into. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. It's a it's a world on itself, and it's you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of logical that it runs parallel or side by side because of the yeah. and the the fact that, like you said, that such a marginalized group was active in those scenes it's only natural that that you will run into each other or find each other because the sound is also has to do with distortion has to do with darkness so it's Mm -hmm. just away from each other all right um do you have releases by iljarn i have two vinyls um but they are reissues this one the strength and angel anger yeah we can compare you have you have the nice version I have this one also on uh, on CD. Like I have the CD version, but also the vinyl version. Yeah. And then also this compilation of 92, 95. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also from Season of Mist. But I have to say that all these reissues are very confusing to me. Um, speaking about Iljarn, um, I'm mostly um, familiar with Strength and Anger, Foley's Poetry on CD, and that's one I refer to as this in between um, release. I don't know that one. Son of the North Star. Most of them had tracks that were released before and then some released. And especially with the reissues on vinyl, I really don't know what is what because I take some tracks from other albums and you, you should make this, you know, this, this three or, or what is what. Um, and for me, the most important album um, uh, that frees in the Nordari cat is still not released on on on, on vinyl vi- vinyl because mm-hmm. that's for me the most important one um it's a compilation of three eps yeah. the norse um Iljarn itself and then minus short i think and Probably. they give a quite you know they, that album shows what the uh, Iljarn is about and uh, it's also my introduction to the band, so maybe that's also a reason. Um, yeah, I've seen um, Devils Alexir has now because the earliest were through Seasons of Mist, I think, right? Yeah, I think Devils Alexir um, announced that they will be repressing, I think, Strength and Anger, self titled, and there's one more that I'm blanking on, on in original format so the um okay all, that's for 2022 so i hope the one you're talking about is next but i don't know yeah it's it's the one it was in the same store i uh, right. found the sort factor and um there's this belgian magazine called humo uh, which is like a tv magazine and uh they jumped early on on the everything that happened in norway uh, oh. with the church burnings 
and the there was this article about what happened like um, the killing and stuff so it was really not the I think mid 90s 94 95 or something and the fun thing is was that for me although I, I was already aware of Dark Throne it was for me like the final push towards the music like uh, yeah. delve into and there was this picture of um how she's called um the blonde lady who also sang in Thor's Hammer uh Runhild Runhild yeah. uh, Hamel Satar but with the vampire teeth and the enormous knife uh, uh, the beautiful girl on the page and thought I should jump and do that music um so and the fun thing was in the store there was this album like uh, which was um, that freeze in the North Ariket, but with a sticker on it, and it was f- um, for uh, humo readers. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. So I took it because I I think weeks before I read the article. Yeah. And now that kind of artwork is very you know what you will have but back then it could have been everything it could have been folk it could have been ambient whatever um but the connection with black metal it wasn't known at all and it was their black metal for humor readers so i took it the sticker was from the uh the, the guy in the record store made the yeah, sticker. it was ah. a written sticker like a recommendation it and that was re- st- I'm okay. still amazed by it because it was released, was it by Napalm Records or was it also Norsleek? I can't remember um, the, uh, that they had it because it was a, a regular pop store and it yeah. was mid-90s and they really had lots of this underground stuff. Um, and it was my introduction and what was really, um, uh, what struck me was the punk nature of the, yeah. of the music uh, because black metal was metal but and I remember when I first heard Darthron was it's like a satanic punk band but still the connection with punk wasn't that you know something that was for me that obvious yeah and um, yeah it was something yeah I, I don't know what to say um, do you think the store grabbed these records or put them in the store because of the remote art article or was it the other way around? I really don't know. I okay. really, really don't know. Um, it's weird yeah. to have them in just a, a regular CD store, I would say. I think it's because, if I'm right, I, don't, I, I was young. And I'm just trying to to understand, but there was, for example, this huge um, distribution company called Displeased Records, yeah. and they did distribution, for example, Napalm Records, Holy Records, Adiposir, all those underground um, yeah. records uh, labels, and um, so they just put it to stores. That was their job. And of mm-hmm. course, the, the, those stores wanted to, 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 to sell albums. And I think some clever guy must have said, hey, that's a good promotional stunt, refer to the article. And it worked. But I also know that those albums, because I didn't have so much money, that they were in the store for months. Oh, okay. There, it was not something people bought. Oh, Even, no. And the underground store in Ghent, Rataplan, for example, Le Hubrum was on a rack, support your local scene for months. It was yeah. on, I think, three euro. It was still francs, but 100 francs. And I, I, I didn't know where to, you know, I, I only had a couple of bucks a month. And what should I buy? And there was always time enough. It's, it will be still there. So it was really lucky to have these kinds of uh, shops. Yeah, I think so. It was not something uh, n- like now, like people, oh, we must be fast to, to buy. Nobody knew it. It was there for months. Yeah. yeah. And also, we, we had most of the records, like put this album, take this album, and put it behind 
I don't know, Neil Young or something. <laughs> oh, I did that so many times. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it, it harkens back to the fact, like you said, that it's just such a small group that is into that music. Yeah. Uh, do you by any chance have the humor, the humor article? I used to have it for a long time, but I think I lost it. The 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 thing is is that um, it's something we should look for because it was really interesting, mm. um, and I, I still re even remember the layout. Yeah, it seems so. <laughs> yeah, I, I still remember the layout. There was this picture of Izan from Emperor with his cape. Okay. Uh, um, On the mountain, or hmm? where he stands on the mountain? No, it was a close up. And the background is white, so just him. Also, Runhilde with the, with a knife. Um, the cover of the humor, the humor wouldn't betray what was inside. I, no, I don't totally not. I, I can't recall. I don't know. But maybe if you write to humor, yeah, who knows? Yeah. Also, another. We are going to sideways, but it was quite on 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 the mainstream news not necessarily always about norway but the idea of extreme metal back then mid 90s was on the news because it was new phenomena and it was also with the parental advisory um stickers it was the same period i remember seeing this site on uh, some you know discussion program also, the uh, a guy who was for Belgium famous, like this radio show um, uh, presenter, uh, Jan Hotekit, uh, who now or, or now he's he he uh, he's not working anymore, but he was the head of the classical music. But yeah. back then, he had this radio show called Metalopolis, yeah. and also on TV. I remember him standing in front of the stage i think it was pickle pop and he was describing all the styles like death metal black metal doom metal and again instead of making maybe parents scared but for me it was i have to remember this fun thing is i know his daughter quite well and oh, she okay. doesn't know he 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 is so he, he was familiar with the music also mm -hmm. on on the radio show I, I wouldn't say he was a fan. I don't know if he was a fan, but he pushed that a lot. Yeah. So I remember. I remember I was in boarding school at the time. Yeah. And I. Now that you say it, it kind of floods my memory because I was always thinking, where would I have heard extreme music for the first time? Yeah. And I think it was Monday nights or Tuesday nights. No. Monday. Monday nights. Yeah. I remember. Having my because we were we were on the fourth floor of boarding school and I remember having a small radio that could pick that up. So yeah, yeah. Oh, and, that's long. <laughs> yeah, it's very long. And I, I think the fun thing was it was all regular metal except until from eleven o'clock or eleven p.m. p.m. Then it was the gates of hell. Only of four hell. tracks with, 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 with extreme metal and many people refer to it. So. Yeah. Belgian people say oh. fr from our age uh, say like um, who influenced me the most they will say by t tape trading friends whatever uh, magazines but what's not said and I'm convinced in hindsight many people will confirm that Jan Hotekiet actually is a very important person <laughs> in the extreme metal history of many Belgian uh, fans. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how hard the, the memory is floating back into my head because you can't see it, but I have goosebumps. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like, because there is no way in hell I understood what I was listening to at that yeah. time because I think I was 10 or 11 maybe. Yeah. But it must have been a seed. Most people talk about Headbangers Ball or stuff like that. And yeah, I know yeah, yeah. there because my dad was looking at stuff like that, but. At Bangers Ball, I was maybe eight. No, was, that's way too young for that. For that so. Had Bangers Ball did some of the, of course, uh, Morbid Angel or even Cradle of Filth, Hecate and Trump Marduk, but never went as far as 
uh, that show, like Metalopolis, because they really did. I, I got to know in the woods by it. it that was really obs- obscure. Um, Misanthrope, a French band, they they really did underground stuff. So yeah. they knew their they knew their shit really. It's weird, yeah. And would it yeah. would it been hard to keep? Or would I he have if, if 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 he was solely um, responsible, but he was the how do you call this in English? Presentator, the presenter. Ah, okay. Um, maybe there were more people involved, but after him, there were it was this girl, uh, Aiko Duster, yeah. uh, who did it for a while, and many people remember her too. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if he really was responsible for the you know the the different bands. I don't know. I know. Um, it's been taken down for for ages now. But when you uh, drive from, I think Brussel, Antwerp. I'm not sure. When you hit Limburg, there's this big sign next to the road that says um, uh, the Limburgs hate and welcome, or uh, people of Limburg uh, wish you welcome, or something like that. And someone spray painted underneath that, except for Jan Houtekip. <laughs> Is it? It was there for. 15 years, I think. <laughs> ah, because he was always laughing with, uh, he had this other uh, program on Wednesday, which mm-hmm. was called Hallo Heute Kid. Yeah. And do you know the concept of it? Yeah, well, <laughs> I kind of remember, and I, knowing from what's on the sign. Uh... People could call, and almost every time someone from your area was calling, he just said, oh no, bye, and... Uh, so he was always laughing with people from Lemberg. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> when I see someone from my area on TV, I go like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> but it's for every region, I guess. The people yeah. That... Um, yeah, I'm not sure it's necessary to show all the albums. Um, is there something cool in the reissues, like the uh, strength and anger? The gatefold has this. Actually, I don't really like the reissues. I don't know why, but they never did Ildjarn for me justice. Um, like for strength and anger, this one. Yeah. And inside, there's this. Oh, that's weird. But what I want to say is even the original, this um, Strength and Angel, has a face or a creature. I always, yeah, that's more um, clear, always uh, related Ildjarn with landscapes or right. or n- no, of course, he, he, he is here, but that's um, a picture. Um, but these reissues have drawings and never associated with Ildjarn. This one or this one, like, like this vile, tormented, yeah. that's not Ildjarn to me. And that's why I dislike it. That's, it, uh, it. This could work for Manas or something, but not Ildjarn. It's, uh, it's a, 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 mis- a misanthrope. And yep. that's why I think it's weird to have these human creatures on it. Although they are quite, you know, uh, sick or whatever. Yeah. If you, when you're talking about the landscapes, I always think about the uh, more ambient stuff you did. I, when, I, when I hear the music on Strength and Anger, I, I have this, this tormented, these visions of torment kind of brings it yeah. up. What I, uh, something, now we're talking about the artwork, what I really uh, loved is that he was one of the first to put a picture of a pig on the, like, not a pig, but um, a, or, a, a pork, or like, like a, a wild swain. Yeah. Um, on, on the cover of a... It's yeah, more, yeah. It's more on the... Um, on the yeah, I don't have it. What, so does it say similar as mine? Yeah, this is the ninety-two, ninety-five. Yeah, I'd rather have yours than this one. Yeah, that's that one. Yeah. But it's still another one. 
what you have because the one I was referring to is from I think a seven inch of a, an EP and it might I'm, I'm really sorry I'm not that well documented um, if it's from Ildjarn Nidhog or Ildjarn but there's something with Svart on it and then like an obscure picture of, of, of a wild uh, I'm like boar Pretty sure it's the Nidhogg split, but I could be mistaken. I mean, yeah. that but, but you know, the the originals also have weird stuff in there. But they have, like you said, the one with the board, the cover. Yeah, that's the, the the CD version, but it's not a seven inch. No. Yeah. Problem is, he has a lot of releases, but in the ninety two ninety five, there's also this, for example. Uh. <laughs> literally a dragon but then but, even worse than that but who did who was responsible for it uh, no hostel this iljarn castle oh no way and it's is that seasons of mist no what label released it uh well the artist here is javier yeguera i think that's weird that's ah oh. On the Dead um, Freeze in the Nord Nordariket uh, album, um, he he dedicates um, the music to that guy. To this one. And I always wondered who that was because I yeah. I actually thought for a while it was like um, um, Che Guevara miswritten. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he, he was a he was a painter. Yeah, it seems so, or, or a, a drawing. Artist. It's really a pity I didn't find the, the, the album now because I could check, but I'm totally sure um, it, it's it's uh, dedicated to that guy, to okay. J. Guerra or something. The um, Both my releases are on Northern Heritage. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's with his consent, but I, yeah. What do you mean, the new artwork? Yeah, maybe. I don't know, but I, I would think it's weird, I think. But a, a, it made, because you're mentioning the, the uh, Javier guy, it does make sense. Because yeah. on the original album, he gets a credit. There's also a big piece about the way he views art and his artwork in the manifest, the way he... Yeah, this relationship with it, but like yeah. I said, you all between lines. Maybe I should read it one day. I'll, uh, I'll put the link in this video. Ah, so great. Yeah. Be defined. All right. Let's jump off the Iljarn dick and into the top fives, maybe, because we are way, we are past the minute mark. Yeah. Um, top five. I. I always put my uh, end of the year list together according to my Discogs page, what I have in collection, then just um, pull some stuff out of there just because I have some to show. I did the same for this one, but I, I found it hard. <laughs> Normally I have like 40 and I have to condense it down to five, but it should have been a great year or it is still a great year for music. But it, it, when I'm going through the list, um, yeah, there's not many essential. I should say maybe my the way I think about records or the way I think about collecting records is changing, but I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> pare it down to just yeah, which was kind of hard um, to make a list right now. But how did you manage? Did you get five? Yeah, it was easy for me because um, thanks to Discogs, I could see what I had bought, bought into th that was from 2000. Of from this uh, first half of the year, um, but it's not totally representative because there are some vinyls I'm still waiting for that have yeah. been released quite recently. But that's still, you know, the second half. Yeah. So, uh, but still, I only, if you would have asked, give me ten, it, it wouldn't. Uh, I would manage to to give you ten records because oh. most of the things I bought are re-releases or older music and um, I'm not and we mentioned it before I'm not really into 
many newer yeah. black metal releases. Um, and kind of the same as you, because like yeah, there's a lot of over that made the the collection stuff like that. But a lot of the stuff when I was looking to my new acquisitions list was from 2020, so a lot of albums that got pushed back maybe or I'm not yeah. Sure. So yeah, it it was kind of hard, but we managed. Um, you can go first if you want. Yeah. Yeah. I will just, it's in no you know, particular order. I will just take what's first. I, mean, I think we uh, already um, talked about it. It's one of the albums from this year I really liked was the um, Damhar. I am. Release called Exordiri, released on Toomp Chamber Music. I'm going to write it down. And it's um, Yo from Babylon Doom Cult pushed me to buy it. Yeah. And I'm really thankful for it. Um, there's a sleeve inside. And it's a mix of um, post punk and Samhain. Samhain is, a bit, is the band that was between, Don, uh, between the Misfits and Danzig. So. And his voice at times is better than Danzig nowadays. Um, maybe sometimes it could be a postage, but I really, really like it. It's okay. very good. I have to get back to it because I, he, uh, yeah, we, we get the same notifications from you, I guess. Yeah. And he, he, uh, he told me to get it, but at the time I didn't have the money or, or I don't know yeah. what. But. It was quite expensive. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm really glad I have it. It. I'm a huge Samhain fan, and it's a nice tribute to it. Like people who like it and make because our music hasn't been made in ages. Yeah. And it's nice to have something fresh. And I thought he he, he told me who were involved. It, it was distributed by um, Tour de Garde. Okay. And or, or he got it through to the garden mm -hmm. and I think some of the people who release music through to the garden or are involved with it have something to do with it okay but that's a rumor if he told me that maybe my interest would be <laughs> a bit more yeah so there you go okay great to start off with talking about Tour de Garde. Let's just ping pong through it. This is uh, Per Mor. With, ah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's recent. Yeah, that's more recent. Tour du Nord, it's called. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I got it, I was under the impression that I heard their previous one, but it was, uh, I got stuff confused and uh, it was a Châtiment that I was listening to. This had a split with, um, Curved blade yep. guy from Akita and stuff like that. Uh, and this is, yeah, this is recent. Now I pulled it out because uh, mainly I have to listen to it again and listen to it a bit more. Um, but I really loved what I heard on first listen and just grabbed it. It's not, yeah, a lot of these records are expensive, like you said with the Damgach. This is also one of those expensive uh, records. But yeah, it is, uh, it will. I'm pretty sure now already it will pop up in my end of the year list. Uh, okay. I listened to it shortly and I liked it, but it didn't stay or I didn't go back to it. But um, maybe one day. Yeah, I, um, I, li I listened to it a few times when, uh, when I first got it in because I didn't listen to it digital and it, it kind of clicked with me instantly. Problem is, I can't imagine what it sounds like um, at this moment. It's been two, it's been a month or two since I heard it, but I know I um, I know it will pop up again. Tell more, my first. I'm going to write it down because I will forget. Um, put it on the list. But your second second one is I hope it's from this year. Because I just I was too lazy and I I, I um, just followed Discogs. Is this yeah. from this year? Mm -hmm. It it shows 2021. I think it's from this year. 
I, I sh actually I should know it, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but wh why this one? Um, because I think this is the one I like most from those guys. Also, okay. I really I think... like it. I like everything. I like the, the how it looks, and because um, I have their tapes too, and um, sometimes I thought it was a bit for me. No, you know it's cool, but not yet there. And with this one, it's there. Uh, I always. I, in the beginning, I had difficulty getting into the sounds they were doing. Mm -hmm. To be fair, they have six tapes out. They are all demos. Mm -hmm. I think what you're saying about this one is that it finally it, it, it clicked with me around, I think, demo five. But with this, they set it up artwork wise, uh, sound wise. I mean, just those two pictures alone are infinite. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I uh, I had it in my uh, I picked it, but since you sent your list today, I just I threw it out. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, I think that EP and then this EP is uh, for Belgium the one-two punch of this year. Yeah. Uh, together with the introns, but that's um, that's a different kind of beast. But yeah. Uh, what label is that on? Is that is it Medieval Prophecy? Ramschap. Ramschap, okay. Ramschap. And there's a, this flyer in it, and uh, it, it says it will be released in the winter of 2020-21. Okay, there you go. Yep. It counts. Yep. But the cool thing is, is that what you're seeing like on the cover is really what the music is trying to express yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um, it, it, it it the entire package works from the music to the artwork the pictures to how it's presented the only thing i the only thing i found weird is that it is um great choice that they put it on 12 inch yeah but it's an over exaggerated seven inch because yeah. <laughs> because it's 12 inch and it has like this side playing around yeah <laughs> But it's cool. I think it works better on 12 than just uh, the picture. Yeah. Th this image wouldn't have worked like on a small no. size. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Too. It's a good it's a good thing they, they pulled yeah. the they pulled that one. Uh since you have an EP, I'll put an EP up to this is Larva. Larva. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's from I keep forgetting where it's from. I think Bulgaria, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. The uh, Dead Doom project consisting of two members, um, Lucilia uh, Sericata and then Disgusting Dennis on bass and drum. <laughs> Dennis Disgusting. I don't know. <laughs> this, uh, this EP <laughs> and the previous day. I talked about it when the tape came out. Uh, they had a, I think, a three song tape coming out last year. This is on Dawn Breed and Stygian Black Hands. And it's just a continuation of their sound. It's the thing I like about it is it's played in a way that I think I could even play on drums. So it's it's very simple, but it's it gets the job done. If you know what I'm saying, uh, there are no overdubs. There's no big fancy production, but it it just works. The thing is called sickening cadaveric perversion. Uh, it's out on tape and seven inch. Um, Necroleptic apparitions and sickening cadaveric perversions. Yeah, I just I don't know why, but it just grabbed me from the when they first released their three tracks to this one, and I hope they do a lot more. But yeah, this is Dennis. No, <laughs> he's yeah. not as disgusting as I would mention. But I think she is more disgusting actually. Oh yeah, but I like Dennis's shirt more. You like the shirt more? Can you can you make it out what it is? It's just regular shirt from H and M, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Shirt is cool. 
No, so Larvae. Uh, yeah, I hope they do a full length. Maybe hopefully this year, but I'm not sure. There were two versions of this. This is the yeah red plus. I don't know. Nice red. Nice red. Um, but yeah, look at I'll I'll put it in a nifty little list on the bottom so you can check it out. But it is basically doom dead. It's never really fast. It's always very slow paced, dragon, ugly shit. So mm -hmm. Love it. Number Next one. Sorry, what was two from? Oh yeah, the. Number three. Number three is again an EP. Helder support from Iskander, which is translated the yeah Gelder, Helderland. Is an area in uh, Holland. So the gate. It's an EP. It's from Omar from uh, Turia and all, all the others' band. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the previous album, which was this mix of early Aeternus, Hades, maybe a little bit of Kampfar. And, uh, but with a more rough voice. And it's really nice how he is evolving from that into this, which, which is more, I wouldn't say poetic. Um, there is a poem spoken in the end uh, by his dad, which is actually the second track, but you can see it as one long track. And yeah, it's very impressive how this guy can make all these different kinds of or size of, of, of well, black metal as a start. Um, it's not a copy of those bands, it's his impression and with no identity. And, and um, there's a new album coming out uh, really soon, I think in September. Uh, I've, I've, I've been uh, uh, really curious to, to, to hear what it will be. Uh, but th this is a good starting point. It's a really nice record. I think um, all in all, this is one of the most, not by all because they are getting there, but he's a very underrated, not only guitar player, but just songsmith. And then, yeah, like you say, the the entire Aresis Novio Magi label, everything that comes out, I think Curia is maybe the most well known. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I am now doubting if I have this record. I think maybe I have it on because I have all their stuff on tape. So, yeah, the artwork is kind of throwing me off because I think the tape is different. different okay, I really like the artwork. He mostly works with something that looks like uh, Xeroxed material, mm -hmm. and um, it works well. It's his yeah. style. I, I've seen other things and. A bit cut and paste the whole how is this movie omaji style yeah. a little bit but what is good from it i, I refer to bands like Eternis or something other bands who would do it you would clearly hear similar riffs yeah but with iskander of most of the things he does it's totally not the case it's the atmosphere that reminds to the bands and not really the way he writes music and that's what makes it really um, impressive or, or what I like from it. Like it's only the atmospheres that, 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 that reminds the other bands. Um, you can hear his signature, of course, but in a way it's totally different from Turia or all the Solar Temple or all the other stuff. Um, also his solo, really a solo thing, so. Yeah. yeah, but this is also on drums. It's Mink from um, Fluisteraars, ah, so it's more a duo. It's his, I, I think, I, I don't know if you can really call his solo output. Oh, maybe. Um, be, maybe he writes everything, yeah. uh, but I think Mink as a drummer is, is more than just a session drummer. Oh. Uh, uh, 
he, he because he really puts his mark on it. Uh, but maybe because Iskander is his second name, so in some way it's quite obvious it's called the Solo Project. But to be sure, you can maybe it's in some interview or you can ask him. Uh, I, I don't know, but I know it's always recorded by two people. Oh, okay. I always thought it was a solo project. Mm. You no, know, the thing I um, I have most of the stuff on tape just because of the tactile way they look and it's the yeah. result art and it just looks amazing. I kind of wish I had some of their stuff on vinyl just for the you know, the total package. I would say, but mm -hmm. great projects all in all. Um, let's stay in the Netherlands for a while. I picked a Vagevue from Val. Uh. Um, there is, I think since I'm doing these videos, I think there's always been a Val record in some kind of way in my uh, top 20, top, uh, top 30. But yeah, I um, once again like this. I don't like it as much as the previous one, the, um, the one from, I think, 2019 already. Uh, this is maybe a bit more um, harsher or minimalistic since the synths are not always present on the um, on the entire record. But uh, yeah, I just I don't know. I just like the the honest and clean sounds these guys always produce on yeah on these records. So yeah, it will always be some of my favorite material. I think that album is like one of the best, and it sounds negative, but rip-offs of Under a Funeral Moon. How they took the sound of the drums, uh, the vocals, or the effects on the vocals, it's totally 100% Under a Funeral Moon. But it's not putting me off. No, that's true. They did it in a good way. There's still enough identity to to um, uh, in itself, but if they would say well, when you would meet the guides or, or say to them like guys, you have clearly been influenced by Under a Funeral Moon, and if they would say no, that's not right, then uh, <laughs> then it's bullshit. <laughs> Listen to it again with fresh ears, and then uh, yeah, see if I, I hear it first. I but I I. I I think it's uh, like more like uh, an homage than really ripping or something. I think, like I described, the dry, honest sound. I think that's relating to uh, to another funeral moon, but I have to check yeah. it. Again. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, that's a cool one. It's this, and uh, have you heard the Tirgul? The the Tirgul. That's yeah. another band from them. They have two tapes out. It's the continuation of the Blood Tyrant project or the Blood Tyrant. Yeah. Yeah. A bit more interesting in scope of sound, I would say. Uh, yeah. yeah, very good stuff. Um, the second last one. Oh, yeah. Cold of Stall from whatever country. <laughs> Maybe Russia. Maybe white Russia, maybe I don't know. But yeah, I really get the goosebumps from this one, yeah. but in a good way. Um, there's some more, I wouldn't say generic black metal on it, atmospheric black metal, uh, because that that doesn't uh, do, do 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 the music right, but things you know. But there's these voices clean guitars and an atmosphere that reminds me to bug the CFL, which only had one seven inch. And it doesn't sound like bug the CFL, but it has the atmosphere and there are like three songs on it. And every time I hear it, I think it's so original and I get goosebumps because it's uh, so, you know, mysterious. It sounds old, not old in a way that it would have been written 20 years ago, mm -hmm. but it has like, it sounds like, you know, uh, some age you can put a date on, like an old movie or, or, or you know, or, 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 or maybe because the name is Russian, 
like an old Russian movie about old times. I yeah. don't know. Um, it's really an atmosphere that some people don't like it. Like I, I know, for example, uh, our good friend Maurice from Now Their Tongues really dislikes it. Um, while I thought it would be something for him. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, it's also released by uh, our friend Yo from Babylon Doomcode. So I'm not praising it because it's by Babylon. Yeah. It's a really good record, I think. Um, it, it, it has something that few, you know, rare seven inches have. An atmosphere that you don't meet regularly. So yeah. That's sure we're talking about the seven inch. Um, yeah. Excuse what, me. What was the name of the seven inch you were talking about? It's a Norwegian Bob the Sifjell. It's a Norwegian band. Yeah, okay. and it has members. It's with uh, Kvitrafen from Wardruna. Yeah. And uh, one guy from that Gdanske folk and maybe also I think Gorgorod, I, I don't know if I'm right. And um, uh, they only have one seven inch. Um, the name, they have one seven inch that was really, you know, popular within the small crowd back in the day. Um, I, I have it here, I think, if it's here. So maybe I can show it. Yeah, it. I, uh, I will take it in a, in a minute. Um, and how does it sound? Of course, there's a lot of battery in it, um, but more melodic battery without being Viking or something. Yeah. Maybe a little bit also of er early ancient, uh, like the 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 Svartalheim period. And it's all in clean voice with uh, also a girl singing a little bit off key, but that's all okay. And you, you, if you know it's a guy from Wardruna, it makes sense where he uh, went to, what his evolution was. And it also maybe has a little bit of early over, um, but it's you know very uh, primitive, no, not primitive, but. Uh, it was a small project actually, and then years later there was this website that said Bagdi Sifial is writing new music, but nothing happened. Okay. Uh, but many people, I re read it on the internet to refer, or maybe the guys itself too, I don't know, or the promotional that, that Bagdi Sifial wa was or is an influence, I don't know. but. I agree, totally relate to it. Um, but if you would compare, it's different. It's the atmosphere a little yeah. bit. I think it was in a promo or something because I knew the name but never, never yeah. done or looked for it. But I'm still guessing like there's this typical guitar lines of what it reminds me of. It's very, you know, yeah, original, but it, it has some, I, I, I'm still not out of it. Um, Called off though. Yeah. Yeah. I somewhere heard a rumor, and I don't know if I'm speaking out of school, but that um, there is a link to a well-known Canadian band, female front with black metal Canadian. Is it? Yeah. Well, well, known. <laughs> well known. <laughs> Could be. There's there's so many so many rumors about that project. Yeah, but, uh, it's been a good seller for him because there's a he got repressed, right? Yeah, it's sure. pressed in, in Europe, if I'm right, and in the US. And meanwhile, there has been at least a European repress. I don't know if there is also one in the USA, I don't know, but it sold. It came out the exact maybe the same day as our album yeah. or the same period. And I remember it was doing really well, also. So, uh, it was in the same box that I got from your, your record in there. Yeah, it's uh, for people into atmospheric black metal. It has clean voices, the rather high Burzumesque shriek too. Um, some people relate to suicidal black metal, but 
they don't know what they're talking about. I don't hear that. No. I love the, since you were talking about Maurice, I love the meme you, uh, you did with the, Maurice trying something over Colossal onto Maurice again. Wasn't there a picture or something like that? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> it was on, I think it was on the algebra phase in, in, in one of the, the comments where he was going off on the record. Yeah, could be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my uh, previous last, I think, is um, here we go with the pronunciation again. Gabstock with N Gang Reden, Altit Reden, or something like that. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the one you recommended before. <laughs> yeah. Did you listen to it? Huh? Did you listen to it? Yeah, but I can't remember how it sounds like. Uh, it is, um, it's on is Strange it, Things. Is it with the heavy metal inside or the trash the, or, or something weird? It's a bit like um, Rune Kohn in, the, in a way that it has everything going yeah. for it. It has uh, 80s horror influences. And I think the, the, the 80s sound is more prevalent on the previous one on the tray. This one yeah. kind of is more on the heavy metal tip, but it just... It has heavy metal, it has black metal, it has trash, it just goes all over the place. But, um, oh. That came out of the uh, um, like um, one of them. Since, yeah, it's, it's heavy metal. I mean, what I mean with a soundtrack slasher or horror film that was it me that was glitching? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, but may, now it's good again. No, glitch again. Okay, I hope, hope you're just showing the video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's bad. Are you good now? Um, it's going back and forth, but let's continue. Okay. I don't know, okay. maybe it's only here. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we're almost good about metal. You have one more, I think. Yeah, but there's glitch all over the place. But uh, do you, can you hear me? Yeah, I think we switch out. Just keep going. I rebooted, so maybe it will work in a minute. Uh, what, what are you going to do? Like cut it, or or, or should I continue? No, no. Or, or wait. I rebooted my uh, uh, my Wi-Fi, so maybe it shall it will pop up again. Now it's good. Yeah. Okay. We're good then. Weird. Uh, the last one. What do you think? Can you guess? Octavio? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not so, uh, how do you call it? Egocentric. <laughs> I didn't put it in because it would be, <laughs> it would be weird. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, is, it's a new one? Yeah, it's a new album. Ah. Yeah, come through, come through. You're coming back. 